you know, I'm not sure what to make of today. <laughs> we were driving home. It, it was late. <sighs> Remember, the sun sets so early. I, anyway. We were driving home and we nearly got back to my uncle's great house down in the dell where the yew trees grow. And all of a sudden, there was a, it looked like an old stagecoach, but of a really old design, coming driven pell-mell by some lunatic up the lane towards us. And when it saw us, the horse reared right up, and the entire cart nearly tipped over. But it didn't quite. All that happened was one of the doors opened, and, and she fell out. Now, I made my uncle stop, and I ran to meet her, let, ran to, to see her, and there she was, lying on the ground, dark hair, <laughs> lovely, and she opened eyes that seemed almost black, except right at the centre of the pupil, some illusion of the lantern made the eyes look red, and I said, are you all right, and she said, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I think nothing is broken. And my uncle came up and he lifted her up and her foot ankle didn't work. Then her face leaned out and said, I'm late, I'm late. Uh, can you look after the child? I will be gone a while, but I will return, my dear. And before we knew what had happened, the old stage had ridden off down the lane and my uncle called after it, but the shadow. So we took the girl who I started to talk to. She's called Carmilla, Carmilla Vigonte. She claims to be a baron's daughter from Italy. She's lovely, so chatty, so friendly. She seems to know about so much. We took her to the great house. <laughs> well, my dear, my uncle said, well, my dear, when we had put Camilla to bed, I've always wanted you to have a, a friend. I am a bit of an old fuddy-duddy, and now it appears you do. She may stay here as long as both of you choose. She seems a charming girl. And in truth, she was. My heart was quite won over. Although there is a strangeness about her. I can't quite place 